doing today? Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> giving another collection to the Southeastern Library. Um, I think this is our third or fourth, fourth, fourth collection. The third? The third collection. Yes. And I'm just, I'm just happy to uh, visit, um, someone look for their family and uh, the history of that family. Um, I'm just happy to help anyone I can. Since you've been donating your funeral programs, you're learning the importance of how those programs offer a little bit about history. Did you know the importance of it? <laughs> Before, I didn't. But like I said again, um, our cousin uh, Joanne Frazier, um, we were having a conversation and she was looking at the programs and she knew the work that you did, uh, the genealogy, and she said, you know what? She said, I think we might need to give these out to now. She said, what you think? And I said, you know what? I said, you're right. <laughs> so it, it worked that way. And um, she was just looking through the program. She saw the history and she thought about you. So that's why we made it a, our point to do so. This is uh, in alphabetical order. Um, making it easier for the library. Um, mm -hmm. It's giving the, the names and the date of births and uh, date of deaths and the burial location um, of the loved ones. And it's very important for genealogical reasons when people are looking for their family history and they want to know where their family was buried at. So that's that database helps you get online real fast as well. Amen. Amen. It does. It's very easy when it's, uh, it, it, when it's organized. Is very organized. One of our community leaders, and I wouldn't need to find anything until one of got to one of the relatives. They had a funeral program, and uh, the information I was looking for there it was right there on the okay, funeral program. Okay. Right. Yeah. So it's very important, Mr. Pons. It helped you a lot. Yeah, it helped me my, with my research, trying to find information on a particular community leader. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't able to, but I did find it in a funeral direct, a funeral program. Mm -hmm. And so they are important. So you got an opportunity to see the collection a little bit, how their funeral programs are preserved today. Yes, what did you they think are, about they, that? They are well preserved. Uh, Richardson Funeral Home, they did an excellent job on, on preserving those uh, programs. Because they will come in handy in the future, especially to researchers and writers, journalists that need information on someone that is passed and you're unable to find it, but you know that the funeral home handling the service and you know the collection is here at Southeastern, so all you have to do is just come out here and, and go through the program and find what you need. Wait, 1,700 funeral programs uh, so that of, they have been uh, preserving. And matter of fact, six, the last 600 prior to this donation here, was scanned at East Baton Rouge Parish Library, and some of them can be found online. Oh, that's great. So we have it here in uh, East Baton Rouge. Mm -hmm. Southeastern and East Baton Rouge, okay. Yes, East Baton Rouge is digitally online, and if a person want to research their family funeral program, they can see the copy mm -hmm. there. Here is just the index, okay. so they would have to come in and look at the, and you know, look at it, but online and back and forth, take a look at Okay. Yes, this is a great day for us. And a great day for me, able to donate copies of the newspaper to Southeastern in honor of my, uh, my late wife. She spent so much time with me with that paper counseling me, giving me ideas. And when things got tough, she put her foot down and told me if I want to hang on to the paper, you know that's your baby, you better do certain things. She said, you better get on the phone. When did your paper start? We started the paper in 1986. And uh, it was strange the way we paper got started. We was at a meeting out here in Southeastern Library, not the library, uh, student union somewhere on campus. Julian Bond was the speaker, and there was no local paper to cover Julian Bond. And I told my wife, we would have to, if it's over with, I said, you know, it's a shame nobody came to, to hear Julian Bond. I mean, nobody covered Julian Bond. And he was a 
popular speaker, popular civil rights leader, and he was here in Hampton. And she said, well, what you gonna do about it? I said, I'm gonna start a paper. And that's when the drum, the drum was started. Donating the first African-American newspaper to Southeastern. Yes, it was the first one. And I never thought that that, that would happen. And I'm a graduate of Southeastern. And I, you know, I never thought I would be back here donating some of my work to their archives. How many copies are you donating today? Uh, we donated 235 copies today. And, uh, and when I go back and tear that shed down, what's left of the shed, <laughs> and if there are any more salvages in there, then I'll salvage those and see what I can do with them. Now, did you cover a lot of local people in the Florida parishes? Yes, uh, the majority of the news that was in there was from the Florida parishes. Okay. And uh, we have some from East Baton Rouge Parish also. And, uh, and most of it was about African American. But that was the whole purpose of starting the paper anyway, because our news wasn't being recorded, our stories wasn't being told. And all the time you can make it to the white newspaper that you had committed a crime. And you was on the front page then. It didn't matter how well your kids did in school or what success they achieved. You never did make the paper. Mr. Ponds, you also have an extensive collection of uh, negatives. Yes, well, I have a great selection of negatives because... Dating back to what period? Uh, that, well, it got to be dating back to the... Yeah, it was dating back to the time when I first, when I first went to college because I was doing this when I, I came out the Army in, in 60 and uh, and I just built me a dark room at home and continued to develop the negative. So some of your photos, some of the negatives go back to the 60s? Yeah, go back to the 60s. Wow. I, and I understood just now that the, the professor said that they have some new equipment that can help you. Yes, he just informed me that uh, they can take those old negatives and turn them into a photo. And Is that something you would consider? I'm considering that and, and to doing that because especially those historical negatives that I have and some of the photos got lost. At least I can go back to the yes. negative and, and, uh, and mark them and bring them out here and let them do what they want to do with them. Well, we thank you so much. Uh, this would be the fourth African American collection here at Southeastern, at the Center for Southeastern Center Studies. We thank you, Mr. Palm, for all of your dedication and also helping to preserve history. You wrote history, you was writing it, but now you're preserving it. Yes, and that's a, that's a good feeling. Knowing that I had a chance to interview the history makers, write their story, take their picture, and now it's being preserved. And that's a wonderful feeling.